Hello, my name is John Jeffries. This video is the first of two videos that I'm creating on the new Taxable Payments Annual Report that applies in the building and construction industry. This first video sets out a basic explanation of this new reporting requirement. The second video deals with the question of what is a building and construction service and what it means to be primarily in the building and construction industry. Let me start off with a basic illustration of the situation that needs to be reported. Penhurst Construction Proprietary Limited mainly constructs light industrial premises. It has 20 employees. 10 of these people are management and administration staff and the other 10 are engaged in the construction of the buildings. About 60% of the labour used by Penhurst Construction is provided by contractors. Sometimes these contractors are single individuals running their own business. Sometimes the contractors are other businesses that have specialist skills and that engage their own employees and subcontractors. During the year ending 30 June 2013, Penhurst Construction had three buildings under construction. During the course of the year, it engaged 32 other businesses to assist with various services in relation to the construction of these buildings. During the year, the company made payments of $1.7 million, including GST, to these businesses. At 30 June 2013, it had unpaid invoices totaling $73,000 that had been issued by the businesses assisting with the construction. The company also paid $1.3 million for materials during the course of the year. Penhurst Construction will need to complete a taxable payments annual report in relation to the year ending 30 June 2013 and submit this to the ATO. This report must be submitted to the ATO by 21 July 2013. However, in the first year of operation, the ATO will permit the company to lodge this report by 28 July 2013 if the company lodges its business activity statement on a quarterly basis. The reason that Penhurst Construction must complete the report is because 1. It has an Australian business number, 2. It is principally in the building and construction industry, and 3. It has paid suppliers that have provided it with building and construction services. The company may lodge its taxable payments annual report through an ATO portal, electronic storage media, or using a paper form. The method it uses will be influenced by the type of accounting system that it maintains. In this report, for each supplier, the company must report 1. The Australian business number of the supplier, if it is known. 2. The name of the supplier. 3. The address of the supplier. 4. The gross amount paid to the supplier in the financial year, including GST. And 5. The amount of the GST that is included in the gross amount paid. There are certain payments which the company has made that are not included on the report. These are the payments to its own employees and payments solely for materials. If a payment is made to a supplier that is for both materials and services, the payment is reported if the services are not incidental to the provision of the materials. The unpaid invoices totaling $73,000 are not reported. They will be reported in respect of the next year when they are paid. Let's now examine the payments made by one of the contractors. Penhurst Constructions engages rock solid concreting to lay the external paths around the buildings. Rock solid concreting is a partnership between ALF and Bruno. They do not have any employees, but they engage subcontractors to assist with the work. During the year ending 30 June 2013, they made payments totalling $140,000 to these subcontractors. This included GST, where the subcontractor was registered for GST. There was $8,000 of GST in the payments of $140,000. The payments to the subcontractors were in relation to all sites on which rock-solid concreting worked, including the Penhurst construction sites. Rock solid concreting will need to submit a taxable payments annual report to the ATO. 
This is because it has an ABN, it is principally in the building and construction industry, and the payments it has made to its subcontractors are principally for building and construction services. If these subcontractors were instead employees of the partnership, no report would be required as tax would have been withheld from their wages. Rock solid concreting will report exactly the same kind of details referred to earlier that Penhurst construction has to report. What happens if the report is not lodged by the due date nor in the form required? The tax law provides for a penalty of $3,400. If you are involved with the building and construction industry and have questions about what has been discussed in this video, please contact your accountant. Please do not contact me. My clients are accountants and lawyers in public practice and I have prepared this video as a service to them. Thank you for watching.